Hello everyone. Between the UN assembly and other stuff, there's a lot going on in Ukraine. I'm going to try to put together a more or less cohesive picture for you all, but it's it's probably still going to be a lot and somewhat confusing. So, let's dive in. So, there's been more um airstrikes against uh Russian military base in Crimea. We'll talk more about that. What's that all about? Kiev dealt a serious blow by close ally. Okay. This is a bit misleading and it's one of those headlines that is just escalating the situation. Here's what's going on. So this actually has been in the works for months now. Uh, basically, there's been an argument between Ukraine and Poland about Ukraine selling its grain in the Polish markets. Before anybody starts yelling at Poland about them being traitors, etc., etc., I stand with Poland on this one because here's what's happened. Poland has taken by far the greatest burden taking care of Ukrainian refugees, housing them, feeding them, finding them jobs, taking care of them, etc., etc. Poland has been supplying weapons to Ukraine. Poland had, um, has been working as a corridor for other countries to supply weapons to Ukraine. So Poland, in addition to being very vocal against Russia's invasion of Ukraine, has gone above and beyond as a neighbor to help Ukraine through the situation. What they're asking in exchange is, please, please let our own farmers sell our grain in our market and some of the nearby European markets so that we could fucking make money and support your own goddamn refugees. That's what they're asking. And so Poland saying, okay, you know what, guys, if you're going to be like that, after everything we've done, and you're not going to concede, you're not going to make this one compromise, then what reason do we have to help you? That's the situation now. And like I said, I understand Poland's um, frustration because after everything they've done, I think they, they deserve to be heard. So that's what's going on with that. In an attempt to intimidate Ukraine, of course, Russia continues with uh, a large wave of uh, strikes, again, against uh, pretty much civilian targets. Even as, in addition to striking military bases in Crimea, uh, Ukrainian forces are slowly but surely pressing Russian army out of Bakhmut, which is downright humiliating. As you recall, the Battle of Bakhmut had lasted uh, nine or ten months before Russians more or less got into it, and they've only been there like a couple of months before Ukrainians started forcing them out, and it looks like Ukrainian forces are going to succeed. So this is just ridiculous. Both Zelensky and President Biden made impassioned speeches to um, the UN Assembly. Zelensky is now meeting uh, with um, U.S. lawmakers on Capitol Hill. I don't know how that's going to go because we know that uh, the Radical Right uh, Freedom Caucus is very staunchly against providing uh, aid to Ukraine. In fact, so much so that their condition for not... Uh, shutting down U.S. government, one of their conditions, is to stop aiding Ukraine. So we know whom they, you know, they support. So we'll see how that goes. You know, if you want to read up on the whole U.S. Congress budget, possible government shutdown debacle, look that up. There's a lot of very smart people, much smarter than me, who have written about this. Um, I would recommend... Heather Cox Richardson and Jay Cool, both of them have covered this extensively. The main um, city that's been hit has been Kherson, but uh, there's been strikes also against Kiev and Kharkiv. There have been um, casualties, so that's still going on, as I said. So why is it that Russia seems to be more vicious than before, if that was even possible? This is why. So not only Zelensky, but other 
representatives in the UN expressed concern about Russia's presence on the Security Council and Russia's veto power, considering everything they're done. So it's not only the country that is directly suffering at the hands of Russia, but others who are now seeing, you know what? Should they even be there? Why do they have this power? They're assholes. So Russia, because it doesn't know any other way, is basically trying to use posturing and violence to retain its influence in the UN, its place on the Security Council, and its coveted veto power.